Hi, I'm Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, we're talking about practicing the words of God. Hey, welcome back to the Chrissy Miles Show. Before we get started, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified of more of my proven methods to get more out of life. Let's begin. Well, in this series, we're talking about how to hear the voice of God. And one of the major, major factors in people not being able to hear the voice of God is not having a willingness or a desire to put his words into practice. So I want to share with you a passage in Matthew chapter 7 that I think will be uh, hopefully relatable to you, at least from the standpoint, if you've ever seen people who are trying to do good things for God, and then somehow they don't seem to really measure up. There's a reason why, and it, ha it happens happens from Matthew chapter 7. So look at this verse with me in chapter 7 verse 21. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. And basically this is coming from a teaching that Jesus is doing among the people where he is describing really false prophets or people who say that they're from God, but they really don't have God's heart. And you can tell that they don't have God's heart because what it is that they're saying doesn't really benefit people and only benefits or blesses themselves. And he talks then about how the way that you would judge whether or not someone is giving you information that comes from God is whether or not that information that they're giving you is actually bearing fruit. And now sometimes we think about that fruit and we think, okay, well, is it bearing fruit in the lives of others? And that's certainly an important factor in judging whether or not you should be listening or following to someone. But really the big question you should be asking is, is that word that they are speaking bearing fruit in their own lives personally? That's really what you want to know. And unfortunately, you know, there's been so much damage that's been done in the body of Christ because, you know, you have these famous pastors that are, are preaching these, these things about, you know, what the Bible says or how to follow God. But on the inside and behind the scenes, they're not really following God or they're, you know, they're having some kind of, you know, infidelity or problem or whatever the case may be. And then that causes people to lose trust in these people that they put their hope in, which should obviously prompt people to desire to follow God first and foremost before they follow people. But really, they should be taking the words that the pastor is saying and testing those things themselves through their own Bible study and their own uh, revelation of Scripture. So Jesus is saying here, there will come a time where people will say, Lord, you know, hey, watch me. Look at what I did over here and look at all the things that I did. But they won't really ever enter the kingdom of heaven because they really didn't know Jesus or conversely, Jesus didn't really know them. And they'll say, didn't we do this? And we prophesy in your name. Didn't we drive out demons? Didn't we perform many miracles? And then I'll tell you, he says plainly, I never knew you away from me. So it's important to really understand the distinction that Jesus is making here um, between two different groups of people. But he's saying is that there are people who want to establish themselves on all the great things they've done in the name of Jesus. And you might not be in the camp that's talking about performing miracles or casting out devils or whatever, but maybe you're in the camp that says, well, look, I, I've served these poor people. I've been involved in the public sector. I've been in, um, you know, I've been involved in, in the medical field, serving people for all these years, Jesus, and didn't I do that in your name? He says that whenever, no matter what it is that we're doing, he's not just um, limiting the activity to people who per say they're performing miracles or prophesying, although, you know, that was common among prophets of that day. And he started this parable by saying, if a prophet among you says this, but the takeaway for us today is that there are people who say they're doing things in the name of Jesus, whether it be, um, you know, prophesying and doing miracles or just simply saying, look, I I'm serving underprivileged people and I've done this my whole life. And he said, there is a chance that on the last day, Jesus might look to them and say, I don't even know who you were. Now, he, he he's going to bring this full circle. Remember, we started with Jesus' admonishment to these particular people to watch out for those who do not bear good fruit. 
okay? And then he talked about they're, they're not bearing fruit, meaning they're, they're not really demonstrating themselves to be uh, people who are actually seeing the Word of God work in their lives, and yet they're telling everybody that they're an ambassador of God or that they have been sent by God to do such and such things, but then Jesus says, listen, I don't even know who you were. And he brings it back now to this final, um, this final takeaway. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, this is verse 24 of Matthew chapter 7, if anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, he is like a wise man who built his house on the rocks. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the house didn't fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew, and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. So this is Jesus literally, you know, taking this idea in, in the middle of this teaching of, hey, get out, get away from me. I didn't even know who you were at the end days. And he's actually juxtaposing these things between two fixed points. And that is if you have a prophet who comes from among you who says, hey, listen, I'm from God. Um, God says to live like this. God says to do this. But there's no fruit. He says that a person or a tree is judged by its fruit, meaning that all these things that these teachers are telling you, if you apply this, it'll work in your life. If it's not working in their life, then perhaps you ought to reconsider, especially you ought to reconsider if they're not seeing any fruit in their life. And yet conversely, they're saying, but I'm doing all these things. And that's really how this is, is really to be interpreted. Because in some cases, um, you know, you could be teaching something that you have not yet seen, but you're teaching it on faith, right? You're trying to share with people that I believe this is what the word of God says. And, uh, you know, maybe it's in the area of financial gain and, and you are teaching on faith, knowing that this is what the word of said, the word of God says, and you may not have seen it fully in your life, but it doesn't mean that, you know, you're a false prophet because it's not happening. It just simply means that you haven't seen the manifestation of it yet. But what he is really indicating as far as these, you know, false teachers, false prophets are concerned are people who are saying, this is what God says about the way you should live. And in addition to that, they are following up with an attitude of God that they receive some kind of a special anointing, a special, um, you know, a special seat in heaven, a special place at the table, because didn't I do this? And didn't I do this? And didn't I do that? And then finally, Jesus says, it's the people who hear the word of God and put it into practice are the people who are really building their lives on a firm foundation. So there's a group of people who hear the word of God and they say, well, I think this is what God says. And then the only reason why they're telling people, this is what God says, this is what the Bible says, this is what I think the word says, is because they want to be justified before God of, for doing great things. You know, there's people that I've seen online that, you know, have, have a, a, a small understanding of truth, I would say, a very little revelation of truth. And they're projecting themselves in such a way that they want to be known because they're taking down the big guy, you know, like, you know, you have thousands of videos on why Joel Osteen is a false teacher or something like that, or Joyce Meyer's no good, right? They want to be known for, you know, being the people who stand on the truth and stand on the word. And, you know, they're taking down the people who are the false teachers and they're the ones that are truly the righteous ones and the ones who really know the Bible, well, all that is, is a, is literally from this parable in Matthew chapter seven. It's people who are saying, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. And look at what I'm doing. I am teaching you about what a terrible false teacher Joyce Meyer is. And, and shouldn't you be thankful that I am helping to enlighten you on how Joel Osteen is the Antichrist. And I am doing this great work for God by fighting against these terrible false teachers of the world. And this is what the Bible says. And aren't you glad that I'm telling you that Andrew Womack is a false person? And uh, this is what the Bible says. And I'm telling you that Katy Perry is from the devil and look at what I am teaching you and not nobody is willing to stand up for the truth and call Katy Perry the devil when she really is you see what I'm saying is like this is what the Bible says and I'm so good and so righteous that I'm gonna be the one who is gonna tell you about it and and shouldn't Jesus be really proud and happy you know with me because I'm 
doing this thing and letting people know what awful people these other people are. That's just a bunch of garbage. <laughs> that is that is nothing more than what Jesus is saying here, where he's saying, listen, you're telling me that you're doing all these great things for me. He's like, I don't even know who you are. That's a hard word for people who think they're doing this great thing for the Lord, because here's what the factor is all boiling down to. Are you putting into practice the things that you say that God is saying? Well, here's the reality. I'm pretty sure that God doesn't tell us in the Bible that it's okay to judge other people and to criticize and condemn them um, for the sake of what? I mean, there, there's just not a, there's not a precedent for that. And there's one thing to say, listen, I don't necessarily agree, but I have a value for that person and I respect that person as an individual. I'm praying for that person that God would, you know, continue to reveal. And I'm praying for myself that God would continue to rebuke me, right? That's how you know that someone really has a heart for truth is because they're putting themselves in the same position and the same mindset that they're trying to say that God has towards someone else. They're saying, listen, God could have the same attitude towards me and I don't even know it, but I want to be a kind of person that is, is, is repentant and, and looking at the sin in my life or whatever the case is. You'll know that someone is really a true teacher of the word of God when they're willing to put themselves in the same position before God as they're trying to place other people. If all you're seeing from people is they're trying to puff themselves up in order to point out the faults of someone else, then and they're not willing to also simultaneously acknowledge you know maybe God thinks this about me maybe I'm a false teacher maybe God has something that he would want to share with me maybe Joyce Meyer would have a rebuke for me maybe Joel Osteen would have something that I could learn from maybe Katy Perry would have a, a revelation about something related to God that I don't even have myself can you honor and respect people enough the ones that you criticize and condemn to say that they might actually have a revelation of God that you yourself don't even have. If you can do that, then you're actually building yourself on the right foundation because you are putting yourself in the same position before God that you're trying to place everybody else under. So you have to have a heart of humility that is bearing fruit in your life. And that fruit is not so much about what you're doing to, you know, to project that you're the super Christian, super apostle, you know, you're a person that's bringing the truth to the world, but that your humility is actually causing you to check yourself and to ask yourself, what might I be doing or what might I be teaching that isn't lining up with the truth of God? What might I uh, have as a perspective that, per that maybe God would have a criticism about? But you see, you have all these teachers out there that are trying to take down you know, the Joel Osteens of the world, the Joyce Myers of the world, and everybody they don't like who doesn't, you know, fit into their, their, their definition of what they think the Bible says, but yet they're never willing to look at themselves and actually ask the question, I wonder what God thinks about me. And all that is, is an indication of self-righteousness, like gone to seed, you know, taken to the hilt in people thinking that they're, they have some superior revelation and then they're, that revelation is, is going to be, uh, the, the, about bringing other people down and pointing out everybody else's faults without looking at themselves. Give me a break. <laughs> I'm passionate about this because this makes me very angry when people do this and you see this all over the place. These people have hundreds of thousands of followers. All they're doing is criticizing famous people like all day long. And like, I guess people like that. I guess people like looking at other people's faults. Well, the only person who likes looking at other people's faults are the people who don't want to look at their own faults. They don't want to look inside themselves. They don't want to have a serious conversation with themselves about how far short they have fallen in the eyes of God or how messed up their life is. And so it's just easier to put on this facade that I'm good and I know the word of God. And yeah, look at what that guy is doing. And look at what that guy is doing. And look at that. that. There's a way to disagree with someone. Somebody that you believe might not be teaching the truth or might not have the truth while still placing a value on that person and doing so out of a place of compassion and desiring for them to know the truth. But you're never going to have the opportunity to give somebody that level of, let's say, revelation that you might have of the word if your desire isn't to love them. If your heart is just to criticize and condemn, there's not going to be an opportunity for, for you to do that unless you wait outside their, their house in Hollywood with a sign and you, you try to pounce on them. But again, the wisdom is proved right by her actions. If that's really your heart, 
then you think that you have the self, this, this righteous, you know, purpose to, to do that to people, then you're just literally showing how much you do not understand the heart of God at all. Because the heart of God offers forgiveness. The heart of God offers compassion. The grace and the mercy of God is what we all need to even stand before him at his throne room. And so whenever we put ourselves in a position to say, I have this word from God, I have this knowledge of the truth. And look at, look at what I'm doing, God, in order to fulfill this person and to tell people how messed up they are and to tell people that they're going to hell. And, and look at all the ways that I have, you know, look at all the followers I have that believe that telling people they're going to hell is the right way to, re, you know, to explain to them the things of God. Jesus says, I never even knew who you were. I, I don't even know who you are. And can you see Jesus saying that? I can. Because he's listening to this ridiculous argument that they're trying to give for why they're justified in giving this perceived truth that they think that they have. And it might be truth, but the reality is that they're delivering it in a way that is never the way that God would deliver that to someone. I mean, if you were really ministering to Katy Perry, right, are you really going to lead with, hey, do you know that you're a sinner and that you need to stop living in sin? You know, are you really going to lead with that? I mean, give me a break. So, you know, everybody gets really bold and courageous behind a camera. But if you were really talking to Joyce Meyer face to face, are you going to bring up, you know, the teaching that she did five years ago that you disagreed with? Um, no, you're probably not going to do that unless you're really lost your mind. You're going to treat it differently. So why have that attitude, you know, in front of a camera when you're not face to face with that person? It, it just doesn't even make any sense. So Jesus finishes this parable and he says, listen, the only people that are going to be putting their life on the right foundation are the ones who read the word and put it into practice. That is at the heart of hearing the voice of God. If you truly desire to hear the voice of God in your life, then your heart and your attitude is going to be to put it into practice in your own life first then you can teach someone else how to do it. And do you understand why that this is important? It's because if you never walk with the Lord yourself personally in these things, then all you're doing is like you're sharing secondhand information with someone. You're saying, well, this is what the Bible says to do. Well, you're not doing that. So how do I know I can trust what you're saying, first of all? And second of all, if you don't even value this word enough to do what it says for yourself, why should I listen to you? What right do you have to tell me what the Bible says when you're not even living by the Bible? You see what I'm saying? It basically turns people into hypocrites, which is why there's so much criticism of Christians because they're telling everybody in the world, well, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this. And yet they're not living that way themselves. They're not actually taking the word of God and applying it to themselves in such a way that it would bear good fruit. And yet they're trying to tell everybody in the world, well, this is what you should live by because the Bible says so. Come on, like get real, will you? I mean, my friend Mary Hudson, Katy Perry's mom would say, give me a first Baptist break, right? <laughs> she says that in chest, tongue in cheek, but it's, it's just kind of like, what are you talking about? This doesn't even make sense what you're saying. And so Jesus then tells them this parable, and this is what it says in verse 28. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds will listen, were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Now, let's pull this together because this is exactly what I'm, I'm trying to teach you here. You see, Jesus was able to say these things and they noticed that he had the ability to, to basically talk the talk because he could walk the walk. He was actually living what he was teaching them. It, it ties so perfectly into this parable, what he's trying to say to them. He was telling them, this is what God says. This is what the law says. And he was living it in such a way that people could tell that he had the authority to teach it because he was living it. And then it says, conversely, he was not teaching it as their teachers of the law, because what did their teachers of the law do? They said, well, this is what the law of Moses says. 
And what were they doing? They were doing the exact opposite or they weren't following at all or they were trying to hide um, some other ulterior thing that they were they were participating in. And yet here they were saying, this is what the law of Moses says. God has given us this word to tell you people, follow the law of Moses. But everybody knew that behind closed doors, they were far from following the law of Moses. They knew that, that the people, common people knew that they were just putting on a charade, putting on a show saying, you follow the law of God this way, but they weren't willing to do it themselves, which basically invalidated everything that they were trying to say. Because if they aren't willing to live according to it, then it must not be that important. Otherwise, they would be following the very words they're trying to tell you to follow. This is what it means to hear the word of God and to put it into practice. It's great to desire to teach people what the Bible says. But the bigger question you have to ask yourself is, do you care what the Bible says? And are you willing to follow it to the utmost degree because you believe it to be supreme in your life? Otherwise, you're just telling somebody else to consider the word of God as the supreme authority in their life when you're not willing to do it in your own life. So if you want to have a ministry that is truly based on a sincere and humble perspective, the kind of perspective perspective that Jesus had. Not only do you need to know what the word of God says, but you need to present it in such a way that you're willing to submit to it and humble yourself to it in your life so as to produce the fruit that demonstrates that this is an authority in your life from God to mankind. I hope you get this today. I'm so excited to share with you. Hey, if you haven't done so yet, click the link in the description for my top eight ways to get more out of life. I want to walk you through eight specific steps that God has given me to really understand how to get the most out of life. It all centers around understanding the word of God. And so download that, the link in the description, the top eight ways to get more out of life and join me again each Tuesday where I teach you how to get more out of life. Thanks for watching.